Hey, this is Duan Aditya from Lighthaven. I got a request um, a, little a little while ago about doing the Dakobe Punyo drill. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to say before we go into this drill. Um, the first being that this drill, unlike most 99% of the things that I put up on this channel or 99% of the things that I teach um, in my class, this drill did not come to me directly from GT. This drill was taught to me by another Tuhan. Um, it was taught to me by Tuhan Claudio. GT actually instructed Tuhan Claudio to teach me this drill. That was my first exposure to, the, to this drill. After that, I've done it with a bunch of other Tuhans and a bunch of other people. Um, but I want to put out there that this drill, GT did not teach this drill to me directly. Um, the other thing is that I know that there are other, I, I mean, I was doing a lot of research for this to see the way other people do this drill. And um, the, some people do it a little bit differently. The ranges, the footwork is a little bit different. Um, I'm going to share with you guys the way that I learned it. I'm also going to do something slightly different for me. I haven't really done a video like this before. I'm going to be teaching um, a student of mine, a friend of mine, Neha, um, the drill live for you guys. She's never done this drill before. I'm going to be teaching it to her for the first time uh, right now because I thought it would be a good way for me to break down the drill and explain to you the, the intricacies and the small little details within it as I am teaching it. Now, again, I'm going to be sharing to you the version that I know. If there are any details that you feel I have missed, if there are anything that you think that should be added, um, please let me please let me know that uh, in the comments down below. One last thing I want to say about this drill is that for me, Takabe Punyo um, uh, represents a like uh, is place a really interesting place within the PKT structure. Uh, when it comes to my training, GT has trained me in PKT. I, I went to the Philippines the first time training GT, and I knew almost zero PKT. And so he's literally trained me from scratch and so often he's been very particular about the things he wants me to learn and things that he doesn't want me to learn. There have been times when I've gone to him and been like, I want to learn this, I want to learn that. And he's flat out refused to teach me that because he's like, no, you need to do this. I want you to do this instead of that or this instead of that. He's been very particular about what it is that I have uh, learned from him. But he very specifically asked another Tuhan to teach this to me. So that shows me that um, he still feels that there is a place for this within the PKD structure. Oftentimes it is neglected nowadays in uh, preference to Sabayan and why that is that's a whole other that's a whole other discussion but I still feel that it does Im hold an important place and it does teach us a whole bunch of things. Once again I'm going to be teaching this to you live, uh, um, I'm going to be teaching Neha this live in front of you guys so it will be messy, uh, it will be, um, it won't be neat and clean, it's going to be messy but that's the whole point of doing it in this format, I hope you guys do enjoy this format. Before we begin though, it would mean a lot if you subscribe to the channel at the end of the video. If you like what you saw, if you learn from what you saw, please do like and share this video. Again, if you have anything to add, please leave that in the comments down below. If you have any requests for future videos or um, any questions for us, leave that in the comments down below. Also, these things really do help out the school and the channel a lot. Our residential program is up and running. If you want to come down to Goa, live with us, train with us, um, please check out the link I'm going to leave down below. So Neha has never done this drill. Um, I thought it would be an interesting sort of way of uh, explaining the drill by teaching it to Neha for the first time on camera. Could be a disaster, but we're going to see. Uh, we're going to see what happens, right? So Dakobe Punyo starts with a low thrust, right? As that low thrust comes, I want to be um, sort of using this umbrella to parry it outside. Now again, I'm like I said earlier, I'm going to be teaching the version that I know. I know of versions where you use this almost in a medium range way. The way I was taught it was as that thrust comes in, I want to sidestep, use that umbrella and I want to be then going to the, to the hand. So as that thrust comes, I'm going to sidestep, I'm going to use that umbrella, head to that hand. Now from here, I am too close to get an effective slash perhaps, which is why I choose to go to the, uh, with the punyo. The other reason why I may not want to go for that slash is because if Neha does the same thing to me, if she does the umbrella and taps, from here if she comes to slash me, I have access to that elbow. And one big thing from that elbow is I can just push it across, right? And that gives me better body position and a whole bunch of follow-up strikes. So instead of that, because I don't want to expose that elbow by turning too much and then coming back with a big winding angle too, I want a shorter straight punyo strike. So Neha is going to stop that punyo strike. Right? So one more time, she thrusts, I use my umbrella, step side, side step, parry, tap that hand, punyo strike. Now, 
From here, Neha wants to clear the line to my head. She wants to strike my head. For my hand is in the way, so she needs to clear that line. So she's gonna push my hand down and look to jam it to my body. So that's what Neha wants to do. Now the issue is, when Neha does that, I have this vitic straight to that head. So that's problem number one, that as she's jamming my hand down, I have this vitic strike up here. The second thing is, from here when Neha is coming up, she's gonna come up again. She's too close perhaps to strike me on the head, to cut me on the head. So Neha wants to either punch me, hit me with the punyo, hit me with the hilt of the sword or uh, hit me with the close closer to her hand, the stick portion, sword portion that's closer to her hand, right, somewhere here. Now the issue is, there's an issue with this also. If Neha punches straight up or does anything in this straight up motion, number one, I still have this punyo, number two, I can parry this out, hit this and I have a whole bunch of options from there because essentially if you give me angle one, that's an essentially it's a ride on, right? Or a breakout if you have done break in, break out. So to solve both these problems, what's gonna happen is they're gonna thrust me again, we're gonna go from the beginning. As she pushes and jams this hand down, in order to stop this, she's gonna come up with an almost uppercut and have the stick facing horizontal. So now as she's clearing, my my vitic instead of going to the head is hitting the hand. So now to solve those issues. Neha is going to, as she pushes down and she uppercuts me, she's going to have this to stop my vitic. I need to stop this uppercut, right? Or this sort of punch. Now the issue is I can't parry this out. I can't parry this this way because this will then cut me. So I first need to stop it in its tracks and then I can think about parrying it. So again, I know there are other ways of doing this bit but I'm going to show you the version that I have learned. So, bang, she pushes it down, uppercuts. I'm going to look to sort of like a pat, uh, like a pat check. So I'm trying to stop the top and vitic the the. Uh, she, I'm trying to vitic her head, and that stick is coming and stopping me from doing that. From here onwards is where I really believe that this drill comes into its own and becomes really. Um, this is where. In a, this is where the masala or the spice of the drill starts from. From when she pushes the hand down to this check. Now again, like I said earlier, I can't just automatically parry this out because it's going to cut my head. So I'm looking to, to, to check the hand and she's checking my vitic. Now from here, I, this is sort of a 50-50, almost 50-50 sort of position. If we reverse it, but well, I'm going to thrust me half. Punyo, I push this down, she vitics and she stops my fist. Now from here, the reason why this is a slightly dangerous position for both of us is because for me, I have a disarm right there. And if you go back to the earlier position where I'm in there, push it down. And for me over here, if we stay over here, if even if Neha jams my, my arm to my body and she holds me the elbow, which is better jamming place, I have the option of still riding on from here and again I have disarms, I have strikes, I have a whole bunch of things from there. I also have, we are come back here, she jams that bicep. I also can control that wrist and do a whole bunch of things with that wrist, right? I can from here look to look to strike, look to thrust, look to come back up, a whole bunch of things I can do. So she doesn't want me grabbing that wrist. And I don't want her to stay in control of this arm because again she can go down to my wrist and she can go for a disarm. So what I'm going to look to do now is I want to clear this. I want to push this, clear it and that gives me a clear path to either that leg cut or the arm cut. Because even if she, it gives me a clear path to that leg cut or her arm cut because even if she jams and holds it tight to my body, I can't pick my elbow up. But what I can do is I can turn my whole body and sidestep into that cut. So I can't lift this, but I can turn the whole body and sidestep into the cut. So once again, she thrusts, my umbrella, punyo, she pushes down, uppercuts, I stop this. Again, I want to clear this to cut her leg. She doesn't want me cutting her leg, so she's going to then meet my stick down here. Now the issue is she doesn't want my hand on her wrist either because again I have disarms, I have a whole bunch of things from here. So as she steps back, she's going to clear the hand. And now I'm going to thrust. She taps the hand, 
Punyo, I push this hand down. As I push this hand down, she's going to vitik my head. Boom. Now from here, Neha is going to go to the outside of my wrist. And she's going to look to push this up to the side as she cuts my leg. I don't want her to cut my leg down here. So I'm going to step back and meet that. Except that she does not clear, she does not let go of the wrist as of yet. Footwork is super important in this drill. If you don't have good footwork, if you haven't practiced your footwork enough, you're going to end up too close, too far away, square when you're not supposed to be square, um, bladed when you're not supposed to be bladed. So footwork is super important. Um, as she thrusts, I'm going to look to sidestep to get here. The reason I'm looking to sidestep is because I want to be able to reach that hand but still have enough space to put power, in, put power into that punyo strike. If I step back, I may have that umbrella but I will not have that hand and from here I don't have that punyo strike, I have other strikes. So I'm going to sidestep, go to the hand, punyo, she pushes down, that's the uppercut with the, with the check. I am going to go down. As we go down, we both step back. She steps back, she moves the hand, make contact with the stick, and then she clears my hand and steps back more, a bit more. Then I thrust. She side steps in and side steps, taps the hand, boom, I push this down, and she checks that at the same time. She goes to the outside. Now, as she's cutting my leg, I don't want her to cut my leg. So I'm going to step, no, no, I'm going to step back and clear the hand while we make contact. So watch my feet again. As she's coming down, she's pushing my hand, she's pushing my hand and cutting my leg. As she's going down, I'm gonna step back and meet that stick and clear the hand. So once again, I'm gonna say there are other ranges that people do this drill in. They do it slightly further out, they do it in slightly different ways. This is the way that I was taught it um, and I thought it would be interesting to show it to you in this format. She's never done this drill before. And this is the first time that she's done doing this drill. Um, Dako Vipunyo sort of has a really interesting place within Piketty where um, GT I'm not sure teaches it so much anymore except like I said earlier he is very particular as to the way he wanted me to be trained and he specifically wanted me to be trained in this drill and so he instructed uh, another two on two on Claudio to teach me this drill. So I'm teaching it to you the way that uh, I was taught it. I just find it interesting in the in the place that it has within Piketty where it's somewhere in the middle of the old stuff and the new stuff because it still has a lot of applications. You're still learning that umbrella, that check, you're learning those punyo strikes, you're learning offense, counter offense, recounter offense. There's a whole bunch of principles within this clearing the hand. Um, there's so many things within this drill um, that even though it's not so often practiced anymore, it still has a lot of value to give us because oftentimes instead of this, people do sabayan. But Dakwe Punyo still has a pretty important place, I feel, within the Piketty structure. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you saw, if you learned from what you saw, please do like and share this video. Please do subscribe to the channel. If you have anything to add, leave that in the comments down below. If you have any questions or requests for future videos, please also leave that in the comments down below. All of these things really do help out the school and the channel a lot. Like I said earlier, our residential program is up and running again. So if you want to come down to Goa, live with us, train with us, check out the link I'm going to leave down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you Neha for assisting me and for putting up with me. And see you guys in the next video.